Yeah, and then you could be jailed for not reporting others, right? That, that's the thing. So you, you, it, it's like Big Brother is watching you, and, and like in in the Cultural Revolution, you have to report to someone uh, whether the other person is doing something bad or bad mouthing the government, right? It's so different from 2019 uh, when we when we were filming in in Hong Kong, right? At least there's a uh, freedom. But now I people are just a uh, uh, just uh, want to keep quiet. Well, so when the party first tried to pass Article 23 in Hong Kong in uh, 2003, there was there was a half a million people protests, and it was so big that uh, they had to shut shut it down. They couldn't pass Article 23. How did it get pushed through seemingly so easy now? Well, in 2020, by that time, a lot of um, people are being locked up. Remember, 2020, um, Jimmy Lai, the publisher of Apple Daily, was first arrested in August 2020. And then he was um, on bail for like seven days in December. He had his um, Christmas And after that, he cannot get out. And after that, in 2021, uh, the first three weeks of 2021, all the pandemic people were arrested. Now, to answer your question, they just silenced all all the opposition voices, right? And then they passed the national security law on June 30th, 2020. And after that, they got, well, three and a half years just to... uh, do all the dirty job, right? And then make this uh, national security issue, uh, turn it into um, like a a local law. Actually, it's more easy for them to implement. And then some people think, you know, why they push it so quickly. It's uh, uh, these are like cater for the pandemic people, the alliance group, like a Hancock Chow, Lee Chuck Yen, and also the the Apple Daily group, which is a Jimmy Lai and those uh, who were arrested, uh, the Apple Daily executives. So it's like tailor-made for those people who are um, in the eyes of uh, Hong Kong, totalitarian regime, and also to Beijing. These are the ones they try to punish. I, I'm afraid, honestly, that um, uh, some of them cannot survive this uh, long jail sentence because this is a harsh, very harsh thing. It's... Um, at par with uh, what um, um, mainland China could offer for for um, jail sentence if it is um, against the government, so to speak. Well, I know Hong Kong has put out uh, you know big bounties on a lot of the Hong Kong protesters who have fled internationally. I'm wondering, you know, are you concerned about your own safety considering, you know, you were a hedge fund manager, you've been very critical of what's been going on? Honestly, you know, I, myself and also um, one person who is in finance, he was formerly a member of the political consultative conference, meaning pro-China. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to agree 100% of what the CCP says. We always talk about, I, I don't want to name his name here because um, your program is being watched uh, by so many. Now, he and I, we talk about the original 1.0 version of um, the one country, two systems. Uh, even though he is so-called pro-aging, at the service, he is pro-aging. But we always condemn, if you don't bring back the 1.0 model, which is the Deng Xiaoping, model talks about them. Um, you could still have horse racing, you could still uh, dance, um, and then everyone is jolly and all that, right? You are putting a nail in the coven for Hong Kong. We, we say that, but but we all know that the one country, two systems, it, it's uh, just um, by name only. So it's um, similar, I think, to uh, what the the Tibetans were facing back in 1959, some 65 years ago, right? After the CCP, they they invaded Tibet, uh, kicked the holiness, the Dalai Lama out, and then doing this uh, ethnic genocide. But we have internet right now. They cannot just kill you. But culturally, 
you know, we will not be using our traditional Chinese characters. And then they want you to uh, speak Mandarin. And, and right now we're going through a blood transfusion because a lot of people leave. And then a lot of people through these uh, different talent schemes, they are already in, in Hong Kong. Now, before the show, I was just talking to someone who uh, uh, went to an older bookstore who bought one of my books. Uh, and then he um, got my WhatsApp. For some reason, he WhatsApp me. Um, he works for a technology, U.S. technology company in Hong Kong. And then and I just found out that actually he was uh, from mainland uh, China and then got his uh, talent scheme and came here, worked at the stock exchange before, now work in U.S. technology company. So lots of people are coming in through this uh, channel. So in 20 years' time, that's supposed to be the end of uh, the so-called one country, two systems. Hong Kong people, um, you know, the, the DNA of it, the so-called, you know, those who had this uh, colonial type with the British and all that, it's gone. And then those who still try to commemorate uh, what happened in Tiananmen, um, those people will be like in their 80s, like Lee Chap Yen. So the, unless the, the regime collapsed, I think uh, Hong Kong people will be pretty much like like robots. Just, and I'm not saying people in China, in mainland, they don't fight uh, because of the scare tactics. A lot of them just focus on making money. They don't think about democracy. They don't think too much about uh, justice. They don't think too much about uh, freedom. 